All right, folks, welcome back to Let's Play the Space Bar. This is Mysterious JG. We just finished uh, Snackle, Snackle, Thip Thock, whatever his name is, his side mission. And uh, talking to him doesn't really net us anything right now. But we learned his lucky number. I don't remember what it was in the last video, but because I had tried to record a video, had the game crash and lost the video, and had to go back and finish that mission again, brrr, his lucky number is now 2569. That should be easy to remember. 25 is 5 squared, and 69 is a number that I can remember. Um, Devin Seven's now hanging out with another uh, Seraphin. It's the one who's all drugged out, not the one who has us killed for bothering him. Also, in the last video, I talked to these guys. They're called Naphthalene. They're basically, they look like moths. They pass a light orb back and forth to get drunk because they're moths. And they make a really annoying high-pitched squeaky noise when you talk to them. But they don't speak standard galactic. As uh, Alias explains, they come over in massive numbers from their home planet to work as laborers. And they're kind of like the... Um, I'm going to put this delicately. They're like the immig immigrant laborers of the galaxy. So they're kind of not treated that well. And Yeah. We're going to do some reading up on some aliens, but first... The lockers. We now know 2569 is that guy's lucky number. As Soft Voice says, you must enter the correct combination before the locker will open. Yeah, 2569. Uh, excuse me, game. This was it. Is there a different one I'm supposed to be looking at? Oh, maybe I just need to try it on all the lockers. One of them it should work on. And the correct combination. That one's available. We don't really care about that. There we are. Stash of Cerebomb, folks. Oh, sorry. Didn't know you were still talking, buddy. You don't have to be a narc or an addict to recognize a kilo of pure, unadulterated Cerebomb. There's enough here to keep everyone in Armpit City high for a month. And I've got it. Thinking we've got to give that to him in exchange for something, but... First, let's do a little reading. Uh, read about the naphthalene real quick. I don't think there's going to be much about them. The species evolved from moth-like ancestors, grows to a height of about four feet. Their homeworld, Coconus, although first charted several centuries ago, has only just been added to the galactic trade routes. Having massively overpopulated Coconus, naphthalenes have been emigrating in large numbers. These are There are a small but growing number of naphthalenes on Armpit 6. On Armpit 6, as well as other worlds in which the Nephthalene have emigrated, they quickly fill the lowest paying, least desirable jobs. Isotope handlers, sewage system operators, crematory line engineers. However, due to their stubborn refusal to assimilate and learn the local language, Nephthalenes have yet to break through the mud ceiling to better employment. Nephthalene are attracted to bright lights, which have an intoxicating effect on them. And. Vildroids. Our last flashback will be with a member of the Vildroid race, so let's read about them. Vildroids are a robotic race created by an apparently extinct organic race on the planet 7-3. They were created with many characteristics of organic species. They are self-aware, self-reproducing, and learning capable. They were originally designed as domestic robots, engineered to tidy up, peel vegetables, and set the table. They became tremendously popular and were considered an absolute necessity for, ev absolute necessity for every home. Vildroid helper units became 7-3's leading export. 
Then, some 5,000 years ago, the organic race known to the Vildroids as the Creators mysteriously vanished, leaving the robotic creations as the heirs to Seven Three. Some off-world scientists success the planet, suggest, suspect a planetary plague, but no evidence for such a demise has ever been located. Perhaps the toughest conundrum is this. If the entire race of creators died in a short span of time, whatever became of their billion-plus corpses? After the disappearance of the creators, the Vildroid continued for some days to follow their domestic algorithms, assuming that their masters had taken an unexpected vacation without informing the help. However, as days passed with no deliveries of milk, with trips to the market only to find it unstaffed, and with no word from the cable guy who was supposed to show up between 9 and 11, the Vildroids began to independently suspect that something was wrong. After many emergency meetings, the Vildroids decided that it was their duty to exactly maintain the society of the creators, so that it would be ready for the day that when the creators decided to return. One by one, they began to staff the jobs that the creators had once occupied, first to be filled with the positions that the Vildroids would have had the most contact with, cashiers, repair personnel, stock people, then working upstream to the factory positions, utility staff, and so on. As years passed, the Vildroid began to lose hope of ever seeing their creators again, but the goal of keeping the society of the creators going continued with even greater determination. All aspects of life, the economy, politics, religion, the social structure, entertainment, academia, were taken over by Vildroids who sought only to recreate life as the creators had lived it, never to question whether or not certain aspects of this life were no longer appropriate in a robotic society. According to testimony of the rare visitor to Seven Three, the Vildroid attempt to rebuild Creator Society has not been fully successful. While the Vildroids are generally of a vastly higher intelligence than the original organic race, they are frustrated at their inability to reproduce certain aspects of the organic race's behavior, notably creativity, romance, fear of mortality, and appreciation for a really good pizza. Thus they regard the organic creators with nostalgia and near-religious reverence. The Vildroids continue to build new Vildroids, and have continued to develop newer and better versions of themselves. Thus, the race is hierarchically organized, with the youngest members at the top, the President is traditionally the newest, latest model Vildroid. The ancient Vildroid Mark V models are inferior in all ways to the current Mark... Don't read Roman numerals that well. That's looking like 3,506. If M's are 1,000, which I think they are, L's are 500, but they might not be. And I think that looks like 3,506. Somebody out there will either correct me or tell me that I'm super fucking awesome. But they are not decommissioned for the simple reason that they are the last remaining build droids who had contact with the creators. The build droids continue to build new... Oh, sorry. It is believed that no build droids that were exported during the time of the creators are still in existence. It is rare nowadays to see build droids off 7-3, although those build droids who have taken the societal role of interstellar trader must travel off-planet in the course of their work. The few build droids who have permanently left their homeworld are greatly desired for positions in accounting, for jobs requiring obsessive cleaning skills, or for any jobs requiring mind-numbingly repetitive activity. Seven three is the homeworld of two races, an organic race known as the Creators and a robotic race that they created, known as the Vildroids. The Creators, for unknown reasons, disappeared several thousand years ago. According to the few off-worlders who have visited Seven Three, it is a lovely, almost idyllic planet, but with a decidedly quirky culture. Okay. The Vildroids we have to talk to... Well, there's two Vildroids, one of whom we get a flashback from. But I believe they are both in the gambling hall. Boom, 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 doom, ba -doom, doom, doom, doom. Let's save again because I'm feeling kind of paranoid about crashes. Excuse me. I do remember that the Vildroid flashback was a really crash happy one. First of all, let's talk to. Hello, my name is. Bet Taker? Ah, I'm thinking that when we do his flashback, we're going to get the programming number. Let's talk to this one first. I don't think we get a flashback with him. Hello, my name is Chip Handler. One thing about Vildroids, you've seen one, you've seen them all. They also have no sense of humor. He frostily informs you the handling of the bonkers could be construed as an attempt to cheat at Bibblebonk. I'm Alias Moon. I am 
shift handler Bankier. This diurnal unit does not seem to have special positive qualities. I am your Bankier chip handler. Our Bankier. You look like a winner. Would you like to place a bet, Mr. Lewis? <laughs> Her name is Alias Node, but okay. Chip Handler was exiled from his home planet 247 years ago. He says that he had a promising career in television and is now a capable banquier. Trip 3 is the bet always placed by Bang Bang Pant, the suave Auditon spy in the series of novels by best-selling author Clackety Clack Feet. Zip Top Bibble and Single Top Bibble are known among Bibble Bonk aficionados as the sucker bets for the low odds associated with them. I regret that I am not programmed to supply the requested information. It is a sad moment. Oh, well, this one has a pin number two. So never mind, maybe... I don't know which one it is we're supposed to be talking to. Uh, let's ask him about the repair guy. Maybe we gotta give the repair guy drugs, I don't know. Oh, you know what? Now that I think about it, if we... Not interested in Bibblebunk, I am programmed to make pleasant conversation. Inquire about the patrons. So, what do you know about the patrons? Our primary source of patronage arises from persons in transit between flights. There are plenty of regulars, also. The clientele is not considered eyebrow. Ask about observations. Have you seen any suspicious characters in here lately? All of our patrons appear to be suspicious in nature. The cook seems especially likely to leave grease deposits or tamper with appliances. Like all blobsters, the gentlemen in the balcony leave trails of debris about the bar, risking a visit by the health inspectors. Can't believe I haven't thought about this until now, but... What do you know about Saren? What do you know about Saren? <laughs> The repairman seems quite paranoid about the contents of his bag. The waitress has not seen herself. Papa got a brand new bag. Displays hostilities which might well arise from guilt. Thanks, but I didn't come for conversation. Fuck you, then. It wasn't my idea to converse with you. Let's save our game first. Let's go chat with our f um, our blind friend with the demon claw. Uh, now that we've got a Sarah bomb. Oh, you know what? I can use the residue printing wand on the, uh, on the Cerebomb. What, uh... Uh, Alias, I know it's been a long time, but surely recall that the wand won't work unless it's been opened. Oops. Not so fast, Gumshoe. You better not do that where people can see it or you'll blow our cover. Oh, fine, for Christ's sake. Go hide behind the damn vending machine and do it. Gotta be some reason to hide behind this thing. Not so fast, gumshoot. Oh, this counts as some place where you can be seen? Fine. I'll just stash it then, but... Oh, we got a call. So, my adversary is a human... I am insulted that your superiors would send a mere human to catch the galaxy's greatest criminal. Sorry, buddy. I hope I will have time to collect your eyes and teeth for my trophy case. I thought we blocked his mental shit from telling who we were. Oh, well. Maybe I was too late in uh, getting that all set up. I don't feel like I've wasted a ton of moves in the bar itself, but, um... I don't think you've got a stash. I think I've got it. 
If you got it, show it to me. Okay, this will probably get us killed, but. So you see. But you don't anymore. Yeah, pretty much. Kind of asking for that, weren't we? All right. You know, you know, you go up to the drug dealer like, "Hey, buddy, I stole your drugs!" Woo <laughs> hoo In your face! And I don't think you've got a stash. I think I've got it. If you got it, show it to me. I don't think that'll be too good for my continued good health. If you had it, you'd know my locker combination. That's right. It's this. Oh, it's 2569. We know that because we got in there and stole the Sarah bomb. Okay. I'd love to kill you right now, but that won't give me my stash back. Maybe we can cut some kind of deal. I don't know. We're asking about the fruit. <laughs> looks like a veg fruit. Well, it looks like a green roaster. Get the slurps away from me. Yeah, so now he's going to help. Definitely not the kind of guy you'd want to push too far. Yeah, well, I've kind of. We're past that point now. I tried to steal his freaking uh, drugs. Yeah, but we've run into a little problem. Uh, now we've got the Cerebomb, but i got no idea how to use it. I don't. You know, I mentioned giving it to the repairman, but I don't... I really don't think that's the answer. Hello there. I'm Elias No. My name is not there. It is Beth Aker. Would you like to place a bed? <laughs> My name is not there. Yeah, you're kind of a... 1397. Unfortunately, I am not programmed to provide information pertaining to that topic. That particular asshole... <laughs> yeah, they're full of crap. Exiled from my home planet 247 years ago, I am employed here as a banquier. Thanks to Chip Handler, that cross-circuited malfunctioning overdeveloped blender, I will never see Saturn 3 again. Ah, alias. I think you need to put in disc 3 to make this work. Okay, so Chip Handler has taken the blame for whatever horrible thing happened to both of them. Uh, this... I'm curious to see whose fault it actually was. Maybe we'll get the chance to find out in this flashback. I'm a little worried about the fact that the evil dude has already figured out who we are. I mean, we've pretty much finished up all these side quests, but the side quests do not take away in-game time. We have all the time in the world to do that. It's in the bar where I don't feel like we've made a lot of progress. Other than, you know, we found a key that's got to do something at some point, right? Go away, you. Been on our pit six a while? It has been many years since I saw the moons over to Saturn 3. That must be very difficult. What happened? It has been most bitter and frustrating. I was exiled most unjustly. Excuse me, sorry. What did you do that was so bad? I did nothing. I was not at fault. Sounds like there was some kind of error. There most certainly was an error. That inept carpet sweeper, chip handler, failed to execute his duties properly, which led to a most unfortunate incident which ruined my career. Well, what did chip handler do? The malfunctioning egg beater was left in charge of a dangerous memory chip, which he failed to keep under his care. His negligence of the rogue chip posed a global threat. Okay. Uh, what was your career? And what about your career? I had Besides wrestling, what are you interested in right now? The incident propelled me from global star to global enemy. What happened to make you change so much? <laughs>
Why settle spotted this much? Could go brand detergent and free spring crystal tip of the day. A monthly discharge goes to the lines of ten seven 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 seven. Yeah, it's like advertising running down there very quickly. Uh, the internal radio receiver is off. Voice ID none. Chance precipitation 7.767%. Dust level 3.19 something. Let my courteous staff launder impress your trousers. And a picture of one of the creators. Graffiti writer was here. <laughs> Okay, so apparently somebody has spray painted the glass covering for our face, and that somebody was a graffiti writer. The Village Green, Television Studio, Stadium, Pet Shop, the Lubra Museum, Barbershop, Town Hall. Nothing in the stash. Let's go ahead and get our game saved before I manage to screw anything up or cause a crash. I think the video has gone long enough now that if it crashes, we just have a short video, which is a nice accomplishment. Ah, our log is the logarithmic tables. Yes, and those are the natural logs. Oh, yeah, I used to know what that means, folks. Back in back in high school days, I actually understood what logarithms were. Now, I couldn't even begin to guess what logarithms mean. I just don't remember. Other than the fact that they were very useful before we had calculators. And are pretty much not uh, very very specific applications for it now. Trash can examine. A receptacle for non-recyclable rubbish. Eureka! I have located a discarded Vim chip. A memory flash bank chip. The series information is inscribed in minuscule letters. Fortunately, my eyes, designed to locate a single piece of dust in a shag carpet, can read it with great facility. That's nice. Uh, it doesn't mean anything to me. So what I do, install the chip? Or... Yeah. Oh, I'm Dirt Kicker. Let's turn on the radio. Okay, it's not really changing anything. Let's put in the chip. Air incompatible operating system. This chip is for use in a Mark 12 and later models. Besides, a preliminary scan indicates that it is useless and contains only plans for completely arresting the aging process and organic life forms now ejecting the chip. <laughs> useless. Because all it does is uh, prevent organic life forms from aging. Who cares about that, right? Statue. This statue was erected in honor of the late great Tunk. Tunk was the owner and proprietor of a small laundromat and must be remembered as a great creator hero. There is an inscription at the base of the statue. I'm a courteous staff launder and press your trousers. See, folks, as we already gathered, uh, the deal with these guys is there's an entire race of robots whose creators are gone and they don't really understand the human society, but they're trying to honor them as best they can. So, this guy who's probably had an advertising jingle or something has, in their minds, become a great hero. Now, where am I now? There are towels. A deeply napped cloth for the absorption of undesirable moisture. Another towel. There's a razor. Examine. Device for the removal of unwanted hair. An attempt to emulate the creators as completely as possible. Vildroids allow these devices to be run over their admittedly hairless facial units. They are only suitable for such professionals as hair trimmer and throat slasher. <laughs> throat slasher. <laughs> because they're trying to recreate all aspects of society, so they don't really understand that an ideal society wouldn't have throat slasher. There's a Playdroid magazine examined. Uh. Play Droid Magazine. I, uh, never look at the photographs, of course. I only peruse it for the excellent articles on, uh, canned goods management and, um, ceramic tile repair. Yes. Uh, quote, read. Okay, well, it's, we need to get this shit off of our face before this is going to do us any good. There's another chip. A memory flash bank chip. 
The series information is inscribed in minuscule letters. Fortunately, my eyes, designed to locate a single piece of dust in oh, here we go. can read it with great facility. Oh, and he's got a Mario Brother mustache. Hair trimmer attack. It would not be considered within the parameters of creators' wishes to battle among ourselves. Examine. Ah, yes, the sartorial practitioner. You can determine his functional role in society by the mustache he sports. His specialty is personal maintenance of the uppermost unit elements. Search him. That would be a functional role of pocket picker or law enforcer, not yourself. Great. Greetings to you. I, Hair Trimmer, acknowledge and return your greeting. Ask about myself. You, you appear to be a Mark V Vildroid, one of the fortunate few who knew the creators. <laughs> you do not look like Jerry Lewis because you are not human. Hair Trim evaluates it as a worthless piece of clutter. He simply has not located the proper waste recycling bin for it yet. Ask about Playdoid Magazine. Of course. I simply maintain a subscription so that customers might enjoy a pleasant diversion during my ministrations, should my conversation prove unstimulating. Stimulating. I lather and scrape me. I cannot attend to you until you comply with the standard operating procedure, sir. Fix my memory. I am not programmed to perform that task. Please constrain your request to those pertaining to sartorial practices. Chat? Do I have to chat with them first? Desperately seeking clues. Do you know who I am? You do appear to be familiar to me. Perhaps I have serviced you before. No matter. Okay, now we chatted with him. Now maybe he'll, uh... We've got to chat with the barber before he can do anything. Oh, wait, no, we have to sit in the chair. A seating unit for barbershop patrons. It can swivel and tilt. And tilt. Now we should be good to go. Lather and scrape me. Of course, I will be most satisfied to groom you and make you most presentable. And then I will tell you what I know about Saren. You look most dapper, sir. Oh, I'll need a facial. That's what I probably need. Certainly, the facial is voice ID hair trimmer, right? Regular facial maintenance will keep you young and elastic looking. I have completed my task, sir. I recommend the deployment of a clay pack on a weekly basis for optimum results. We well, certainly knows barbershop crap. <laughs> A rich foamy lather, which, according to ancient lore, aids in the removal of facial hair. Greetings, sport. Your appearance is quite disheveled. Of all the nights to get spizzled, you pick the night before the grand final. Kid. Your sense of timing is far less than exemplary. Vebel coach leads you to a van-sized motor vehicle and drives at an accelerated pace across the township. The vehicle is traveling at an unsafe speed, but you feel it would be impolite to vocalize that opinion. After a few ticks, the van stops outside a large athletic arena. Vebel coach leads you to a chamber within. If the monotony of waiting fails to sufficiently engage your processors, recall that you are permitted to activate your internal radio. Okay, folks. Well, he, I guess we're some kind of sports figure, but I wasn't actually done playing around. Uh, I guess as soon as you get your sartorial needs dealt with... Uh, This is the barber shop. I don't want to be here yet. I want to see what else there is to do. Yeah, there we go. We're in a museum. I remember there being some kind of museum full of wacky and goofy fun jokes concerning the relationship between these dudes and the creators. 
Here's a painting. Let's examine it. If you were worthy enough to comment on the endeavors of the creators, you would say that these are some of their finest works. You would have to short every circuit in your protocol package before you could perform such a violation against the creators. No. Oh. This way, please, into the main gallery. Oh, it's our Buoyancy, tour, but ambulance, the giddiness of a small child, the constant struggle of light against shadow, of foreground against background, of clarity versus mystery. The flowers look poorly painted and unrealistic. <laughs> oh, it's the scream. They've got the flower that's are upside down. The, <laughs> of the panic that overtakes us as we near death. The helplessness of an overturned bug. The itchy chafing of wool pajamas. The artist left excess paint on the canvas. It needs to be sanded down. <laughs> Sorry. They're trying to appreciate art, and it's not really working. Ah, the Campbell's soup can. Look at this painting, replete with symbolism. The carafe of wine is life, happiness, and health. Half full because we have already, each of us, lived a thousand lives. Half empty because it's really getting to be time for an oil change. And the hunting rifle symbolizes the permanence of vacuuming. What does the loaf of bread symbolize? The inevitability of crumbs all over the floor. Now they're going to do the Campbell soup, can I? Or maybe not. One cannot look at this work without being struck by the artist's broad vocabulary of facial expressions, her facility with motion, the way the late morning light draws out the hues and tones, pure magic. It reminds me of soup. Ah, the endless cycle of laundry. In the early days, the creators laundered their clothes in the river, Despite the high levels of both microorganism and fecal waste contaminants in the water, I find this one particularly moving. Okay. So I don't think I can... Yeah, the, uh, the scream is over there. We have flowers that are upside down. All of the creators. Here we go. Toothbrush. Examine. An important artifact from the time of the creators. Read. According to the video archive of the time of the creators, this. See, now. I don't know if I can come back here and do this after getting the haircut. Which is what I would rather do. But I guess I'll figure out that out off camera. So, uh, that's going to be it, folks. When we come back, um, we will work on this very last uh, flashback and uh, hopefully uh, I haven't wasted enough time that I need to start the game over uh, because if I do that will mean replaying through all the flashbacks off screen which I don't particularly want to do uh, hopefully we've still got enough time to solve the mystery and the murder and wackiness in the space bar itself but anyway this has been Mysterious JG thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time